Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania is directed by Peyton Reed and stars Paul Rudd, Jonathan Majors, Evangeline Lilly, and a ton of other people here, and tells the story of Ant-Man and the Wasp being trapped in the quantum realm with the rest of their family, including Ant-Man's daughter, Cassie, who caused this entire Lost in this New Realm situation in the first place. And in this adventure, they encounter Kane the Conqueror, who's planning to get out of the Quantum Realm in order to conquer more worlds and become the strongest being in the universe. Now, I am a big fan of the first Ant-Man film. I think it is a really fun heist film that is in the vein of the superhero movie. And it does that sort of twist with the superhero genre with it being a heist movie very well. It is one of the more smaller scaled films in the MCU and for that I think there's a bit of uniqueness to the film that I find it to be very distinct apart from other films in the MCU. Game Man the Wasp is a fun sequel that doesn't do much new but it is a fun little adventure that is sort of a uh, McGuffin movie that everyone is after. Think of Mad Max Fury Road except maybe a little worse but still quite a bit of fun when you're just watching it on a rainy day. This movie I don't find myself watching this movie ever again honestly. I think this is in my opinion the worst of the Ant-Man films and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that it is very CGI heavy. I mean, the other films utilize CGI, but I know they're in a different world, but my god, nothing feels tangible at all here in this film. Nothing feels real. Nothing feels like you could go into that world and touch the object that these characters are touching. Everything just feels so overproduced. Everything felt so fake. And I hated that about this film. I hated that this film was fake looking. I hate how there was so much CGI to the point where you could even tell the green screen at times and that the characters are just standing in a void looking at literally nothing. I mean the special effects here are absolutely terrible. There are a few shots where the CGI looked good but most of the time, there's just so much happening on screen visually that it becomes eye-inducing. It is truly one of the worst looking films in the MCU. The characterizations for some of the characters is lackluster. Paul Rudd is really good as Ant-Man like always. He does the job very well. Evangeline Lilly is okay as the Wasp that we know and love. The problem with the characters here is that the characterizations apart from Ant-Man is terrible. Jonathan Majors is fantastic as Kane. He gives a really good performance, but his characterization is so standard. And even though we do see what led up to who he is now, we then go further back to learn more about the past of his and that became so much more interesting than his connection with Hope in this film and I find him to be a character with so much potential but was never given the chance to show any of that potential. I think that you could have done so much exploring this character and, and I hope that future MCU movies explore him more but I think this is a character uh, a variant of Kane that just experienced these things only through his own eyes and we're never going to see any of this come to fruition we're never going to see any of this again so this version of Kane in terms of writing had so much potential but was undercooked with some okay dialogue. I mean his performance gives a lot of gravitas to what he's saying but I wish we could have explored more of him 
and just I hope that the movie could have done a little bit more to have us not empathize but understand him. I wish we could have gotten that big villain that we were promised as the Thanos of this new phase of the MCU. But what I saw, he is just a generic bad guy that has a good actor performing him very well. But the writing was just not hitting home for me. So King, in my opinion, was the most disappointing aspect of the film. Uh, with all the other characters, um, Hank and Hope, they were good. Hope had a little bit more of a connection with King here and I think she was alright. But her characterization is something that we've seen a million times before with a certain side character sharing a secret that they don't want to tell because they want to keep their family safe. Like we've seen this all before. Uh, Hank uh, noticing something and it comes to fruition to be something really extravagant that's important to the end of the film. We've seen that before. Um, Casey um she's an asshole is what i'll say um in the beginning of the film she starts off as an arrogant teenager who happens to be a protester um and how she describes him their father how she describes him and i i'm gonna i'm, I'm not gonna edit this i'm just show you my frustration it's hard to contain but the fact that she diminishes the fact that he saved the entire universe and still tries to undermine all that by telling him that there's still other people out there that need his help and you're not doing anything about it he literally saved the entire universe he came up with the idea of time travel to defeat Thanos get the infinity stones and because of this idea that he had he was able to pivot the Avengers into going with him on this suicidal mission to save the entire universe from the most powerful being of the universe and undo what he did in Infinity War and bring all your loved ones back. I mean, sure, there's going to be problems from what happened with the blip, but everyone is still alive and saved and are given a second chance and you could still help out with that. But you don't have to undermine what he did in a previous film that is so important to the entire universe and story of this Infinity Saga that you know I'm gonna stop as a tangent. You already know my points, what I'm trying to say, and I've heard a lot of other people say it. But that, but that first act alone, and how they set up this character. I mean, sure, yeah, have her learn her mistakes along the way. And I like how the movie at times don't make her a Mary Sue character. She has to learn to use the Ant-Man suit. Um, that is fine. But how they set up her character. Just made me dislike her entire character overall. Because you then are doing a complete 180. And no matter what you do. It feels out of left field when she tried to have more empathy for him and try to say sweet things to him like how she tried like how she actually made this device she could find him in the quantum realm that that, that feels fake to me anything that she does nice then on feels fake to me because how they set up her character and what she describes what the main character has done as pointless and doesn't help at all angers me and how she she became the one that causes the entire situation to happen in the first place. The writing needs a lot more rewrites and needed to make the characters likable. Yes, have them have flaws. If you want to make them unlikable, 
do so. I'm fine with that. But you can't just pull 180 and expect me to all of a sudden like the character all of a sudden. Just because they said a few nice things just afterwards and pretend to care. I did not like how they characterized Casey here and she just was my least favorite character of the entire film. And the reason that she is the one that causes the entire situation to happen in the first place. Uh, why would I care about her in the end of the film? I don't know. Action wise, vomit inducing. I've seen clustered action before done very well in other MCU films and this is just not it. This is just boring and I don't care about the story or the characters here so why would I care about what's happening here? I don't know but it's universal stakes happening so I guess I have to care. Um, this film just lost what made the first two films unique. The first two films are just simple heist films or a MacGuffin film just disguised as a superhero movie. The small scaled stories happening within a universe full of aliens and gods you just have this ant-sized character just having his own little adventures within the MCU. That's what made him unique. And the fact that this movie felt like it needed to go bigger did not make it better. Sure, you could go bigger and better. I mean, John Wick Chapter 4 proved that tremendously. But this movie, it didn't have a good story, didn't have good characters, the visual effects were terrible, the dialogue is awful, Especially with characters like Modoc, not just only his visual effects are terrible, but the way they written his character and the stuff he says is absolute cringe. I hated this film. I I won't go as far to say it is as bad as something like Thor: Love and Thunder, but this is near that same level of atrocity. There are some good performances here. There are some good ideas, and the villain is okay. But there's even terrible scene continuity and editing and how they cut scenes all of a sudden and transition awkwardly to the next scene. It's just, at, in a filmmaking standpoint for me, this was awful. Overall, I didn't like Ant-Man the Wasp. I think it is one of the worst films in the MCU and I'm gonna give Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania a B minus. Thank you guys so much for watching. People like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys next time.